Hello everyone, welcome to the third video in the Out Chasing Stars Marine Electrical 101 series. Today, we're going to be talking about how to size your battery bank. So welcome, I'm David, and I'd like to invite you to sit back, relax, and let's talk boats. This video is going to continue to build on the first two from this 101 series. So if you haven't watched those yet and want to make sure you have a bit of a baseline, I'd recommend clicking up here on the pop out banner, watch those first, and then you'll feel all caught up and ready to go today. So we're going to go ahead and talk about battery bank sizing. I've got a worksheet all prepped and ready for you guys. There will be a link down in the description below where you can go ahead and download that worksheet. I'm gonna go ahead, open it up, and let's dive right on in. The first thing I'd like you to notice when you open up the worksheet is that I've tried to remain relatively consistent with my color coding. If you'll notice there's a lot of areas that have blue. Those are where you're gonna be inputting some values. The areas that are gray, those have equations built into the worksheet. If you type numbers into those, you're probably gonna mess things up. And I've worked hard on this for you, so Let's try to avoid that. We're gonna go ahead and start off and put in this top row of our gross daily consumption, watt hours per day. Now that ties back to the power audit that we did in the last video. So again, if you missed that one, pop out banner up here, go check out how to do a power audit on your boat. I've gone ahead and for this exercise, I've kept the Starry Horizons numbers as part of this worksheet. And you can see we calculated that we use about 4,750 watt hours per day on Starry Horizons when we're at anchor. So let's go ahead and use that number as we're trying to figure out what would be an appropriate battery bank size for our day-to-day -day usage. So I'm gonna go ahead, come back here and put 4,750 watt hours per day that we use aboard Starry Horizons. Now that is the total amount of power used, but we also have the ability to generate some power during the day. To start off, let's talk about solar. Estimating the actual solar output that you're gonna get is very difficult. It's hard to try to work your head around the efficiency of the panels, the watt, total watt size that you're gonna have installed on the boat. It all gets to be a bit tricky. So I've tried to put a little solar output estimator over here for you to give you a rough estimate and that's as best as I can promise you. It's going to be rough, but it'll give you a starting point. So what I'd suggest that you do is go around your entire boat and figure out the total solar wattage that you're gonna be able to install. For Starry Horizons, that's roughly a thousand watts at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that number in here. The next thing we need to do is try to estimate the hours of peak sun that you'll get during the day. This one, I've got a really cool little resource for you. I'm gonna go ahead and swap on over here to my web browser. This is a the Global Solar Atlas. And I will leave links to all these resources down in the description below if you wanna go in and check these out a little bit more. But this is a really, really awesome resource. I definitely suggest you check it out. I'm gonna go ahead and search for the Bahamas. If it pops it up here. Now, what we can take a look at. There's lots of options that you can play around with and see different pieces of information that this atlas will provide you. Um, what I'm looking for right now is the global horizontal irradiation number. Gets into some pretty serious science. If you're really curious, start looking it up. But basically, the, um, the kilowatt hours per meter squared that's represented by this number is approximately the peak sun hours that you'll get in a day. So what I'm looking at here, the global horizontal irradiation for the Bahamas is approximately 5 to 5.8 kilowatt hours per meter squared. So we can expect to see roughly five and a half hours of peak sun a day. That's not a lot because like I said, it's only really peak sun when the sun is super high up overhead. So play around kind of where you're expecting to go cruising look a little bit more deeply into that and estimate how many hours of sun you're going to get. I'm going to go ahead and pop back to our spreadsheet here and we'll estimate five and a half hours of peak sun per day. 
Now, this next line is the adjustment factor. And I have this in here because solar on a boat is not the perfect installation solution. You're gonna have shading from your sails, from the rigging. Uh, unless you're on a, a really fancy solar install, the solar panels will likely just be horizontal. So they're not tracking the movement of the sun as it goes over the horizon. So there's kind of an adjustment factor in here. And I've seen a few different websites say about a 75% adjustment factor is an appropriate estimation. So we're gonna go ahead and put in 0.75, and that should calculate that we should see a daily watt hour production of a little over 4,000 watts. So that's pretty decent and a, a little higher than what we've actually seen in the Bahamas this year. That also has to take into account the age of the solar panels, all those things. So if you feel that you're going to be in a more advantageous installation, maybe bump up your adjustment factor a little bit. Maybe this is a little bit too high for Starry Horizons. So I'll bump this down to 0.7. That looks a little more appropriate. Okay, a little bit of a long spiel on how to estimate solar. Let's go ahead and jump back and talk about wind and hydro generation. For wind and hydro generators, it's a little bit easier. Basically, you just need to look up the specs for the wind generator or the hydro generator you have. Let's go ahead and start off and take a look at an example wind generator. This is a Super Wind 350. It's a very common, popular wind generator for cruising boats. Uh, we do not personally have one on Starry Horizons, but we can use this as our example. Now, we're not kind of very nice about this. They've got the wind speed in meters per second, whereas knots is certainly the much more common unit that cruisers are going to be talking about. But roughly between uh, 7 and 8 meters per second is about 15 knots. So if we kind of come up the curve here, let's estimate and say that's about 80 watts of power output at 15 knots of wind. Now, because we are trying to input this in watt hours per day, we need to do a little calculation. If it's going to be 80 watts that the wind generator is outputting, it's going to be 80. And theoretically, that can work 24 hours a day. So we'll do 80 times 24 and in an ideal situation, could get almost 2,000 watts of power from a wind generator. It's not bad. Wind is never quite that consistent, so kind of take that into consideration. But if you're contemplating adding a wind generator for you, got the option in to be able to account for that. Now, hydro generation. We have a Watt and C hydro generator on Star Horizons. So let's go ahead and go to their website, and they have some output curves as well. I'm gonna kind of go along on Starry Horizons on our entire passages around the world, we've averaged roughly 6.7 knots. So I'm gonna come down here on the curve and say, uh, it estimates we should see about 214 watts at 6.7 knots using the standard sized prop. All kinds of different options you can investigate there. I'm gonna say, based on what we've seen, that's a little optimistic, but we'll use that kind of as our, our estimate now. Again, we could estimate a little equation here, 214 watts. Technically, we could use that over an entire 24 hour period while we're at sea. And we could see upwards of 5,000 watts of power generated from a hydro generator. So that is kind of a, the three main renewable energy sources I'd say that you see on a boat. Now, because I'm trying to approach this from the perspective of Starry Horizons at anchor, I'm gonna say the hydro generation is not appropriate for this exercise. I'm gonna put that back to zero. And we do not have wind generator on the boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back at zero. Now, as you see, we've got a net energy consumption that is positive. That means that we use more power than we generate via all of our renewable energy sources each day, which leads us to the next few questions. how long you would like to be able to go without having to charge your batteries if you are using more power per day than you generate. That's typically been our energy consumption, I don't know, philosophy since we've been on the boat. The batteries and the solar have been sized so that they are large enough for us to go 
X number of days before we have to start the generator and top, top up the batteries while we make water. So I would say roughly we go five-ish days is kind of our, our goal between having to do chargings. Now, there is another way to look at this number. If you produce so much solar panel power that you actually don't need to have a large charging source, whether that's alternators or a, a generator, you might wanna look at this as a, well, how long could I go if the days are overcast? So let's just do that example real quick. Let's go ahead and say, oh, we got like 3,000 watts of solar. We're gonna, we're gonna go crazy here. That would put our daily watt hour production very high. Our daily consumption would still stay about the same. The net energy consumption is now negative, which means we're producing more power than we need. However, I'm gonna go ahead and come back here and you can, both numbers obviously are gonna work in this equation. I'm gonna mess with the adjustment factor and say, well, with the clouds and everything, let's say we're only gonna use a adjustment factor of mm, 0.2, and there we go. Now we're back to a net energy consumption, which is positive. So if we're having a cloudy day, uh, even though we've got a lot of solar, it's still not producing enough to cover our total daily consumption. Thus, the five days would be we could stand five cloudy days in a row before we would have to worry about start starting up an engine using an alternator to provide some additional power. For now, let's go ahead and go back to kind of our original process and say we're going to put our total solar wattage back to 1000 and we'll continue on with our normal example. The next thing we need to decide is what's the battery usage range that you can count on? And this is going to depend significantly based on which kind of batteries you have on your boat. So we have lithium batteries on Stry Horizons and generally the rule of thumb is you can use 80% of their rated capacity. So I would come in here and say we can use 80%. Now, lead acid batteries, that's significantly different. You can generally be advised that you're only supposed to go to a depth of discharge of about 50%. So if you have 1,000 amp hours of lead acid batteries, you only can use 500 of those amp hours. Now, real world calculations is another question because for lead acid, the charging profiles to get from say 85% to 100% charge takes a very long time. In real world cruising applications, you're probably not going to be getting the batteries that high topped up. So I would even almost estimate a 35% usage rate if you are going to be having a lead acid battery. And I'm going to go ahead and keep this at 80% for the lithiums for right now. But once you have all the numbers in, let's compare exactly what we're gonna have for um, the lead acid, and you can see what a difference that's gonna make. For right now, we're gonna move on and estimate the battery voltage. So Star Horizons is a 12 volt boat. You can have 24, 48, whatever is gonna be appropriate for your application, but I'm gonna go ahead and pop in 12 volts. Realizing I just made a bit of a mistake because I'm sitting here, I'm like, huh, our net energy consumption is, is really high still because I forgot to change the adjustment factor back. So let's go ahead, adjust that back to 0.7. That is looking a little more appropriate. We can see now that all the numbers are inputted, it would suggest for me that we would need a watt hour capacity for our batteries of a little over 5,500 or an amp hour capacity of 464. I would strongly suggest that you go conservative. Yes, these are all estimates. This would be a good place to start from, but you're never gonna be too upset if you've got a larger battery capacity than what you're estimating, because it's all estimates. You may end up using more power than you think, or your solar panel installation or your uh, wind generator may not produce as much power as you think. So having a little bit of extra battery capacity, never a bad idea. Now, as I was mentioning, this battery, battery range usage input varying between lithium and uh, the lead acid can make a really big difference. So let's remember, 464 is our amp hour battery capacity recommended for a lithium battery. If we're gonna change the lead acid and all of a sudden we go from a usable range to 35, we now need over a thousand amp hours 
of battery capacity for the same uh, desired days between charging lifestyle on the boat. That's significant. And where you start to understand why some of the economic impacts of lithium and the, the economics of the whole swap start to make a bit more sense. So this is the battery size of spreadsheet. I would definitely suggest that you go in and kind of play around with some of the different options. Do the best advice I can offer is really hammer hard on that power audit for your boat. That's really going to give you a great idea of exactly how much power you're going to be using. And it'll really help you as you're trying to plan further on down the road. So that's about it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, leave a comment down below, kind of let me know what you think. And if you would like, I'd recommend maybe, you know, clicking up here, subscribe for more of our videos or click down there. Watch some more of the videos from our other adventures. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see y'all another day, another bay.